And here in Goss's Garage, we've been talking about front end alignments, or specifically uh, four wheel or two wheel alignments, thrust angle and stuff like that. Well, in order to align a car, you have to know what the different readings that uh, the technician is going to take, what those readings mean. Well, the most typical one that we're going to encounter when we're looking at front end alignment printouts and so on is camber. And camber, if we look at the tires, looking right straight at the front of the car, the tires being tipped in at the top, straight, or tipped out. Now, as they're tipped in, that's negative camber. Zero camber would be straight up and down, and positive would be tipped to the outside, which typically is not done because they tilt them a little bit in at the top. That way, when you go around a corner, you're applying the force like this instead of over center like this. All right, so camber. The other thing is caster. And caster, the best way to envision caster is with a bicycle. Bicycle always has positive caster. And that means that the way the wheel is mounted relative to the chassis of the vehicle, that the wheel is pushed out forward. Well, this is what gives the car the ability to go around corners and return to center and things like that. Now, there's a third one, and that's called toe-in. Now, toe-in, if you were looking right straight down at the top of the wheels, now forget camber here. Now we're not looking at the front of the car. We're looking down from the top and we're looking at the two tires on the front of the car and the distance to here compared to here is toe-in. Now most cars have some toe-in and the reason they have that is because they want the tires to go straight down the road, and you've got all of these mechanical linkages and rubber bushings and stuff under the vehicle. So once it gets up to speed, what happens is you get some flexing in these various things, and as they flex, the wheels come out, and they wind up being almost perfectly straight ahead, even though when the car is sitting still, we've got the front of the tires towed in slightly. So caster, camber, and toe-in, these are the settings. How do we go about adjusting them? Well, there are a lot of different ways. When we get a car in that needs to be adjusted like caster, or excuse me, camber, for instance, here we have a, a modern type strut. If we look down here, this is an elongated slot. Up here we have a bolt, down here we have a bolt, and we can pivot on this upper bolt like this, using this slot down here. So that's the most common one that we get. Now, other things, some cars may have things like this. These are cams that we can turn, and as we can see, this would turn off center, and whatever is mounted on this bolt in here would actually move back and forth. So that's one way that it's done. Another way is with special bolts like we see here. This bolt is smaller, uh, the body of it is smaller, it's shaped differently than the original one, and that allows more uh, movement within one of these slots so we can get more adjustment. Uh, here we have an offset. This is a, a unit that goes into the front end, we can see it better with this one here. This is an offset bushing. This goes into a part on the car, and as we turn this, what we're going to see is that we can move these adjustments around. Old ways of doing it, shims, such as we have there. You have two pieces that are held together with a bolt. You just put shims in between the bolt uh, the part and the body of the vehicle, and you move these parts around. Shims like we have here, these are for a Corvette, by the way. And then, of course, you have the cars that, well, they can't be aligned. Then we come up with things like this. This is a, an arm that goes in the back end of a, a particular vehicle. The original one is just solid. There's no adjustment in it. This is a replacement that has this turnbuckle affair in the middle 
so that we can make this longer or shorter to adjust the alignment. And this particular one goes in the back end of a car. As it comes from the factory, the rear of this car is not adjustable. By adding this kit, we can adjust it. And of course, as we know from previous sessions, we have to align the rear wheels first because we're going to use those as a reference to align the front wheels. For lots of great tips and a lot of good information, check us out at goss-garage.com.